What is up, everybody? It's your boy, Drew Drake, up in the building, and today I'm joined by Mr. David Wise for another edition of Locked On Seminoles. Dave, what are we talking about today? Drake, got a hot plate today. Got to talk uh, Camden Fryer and some legacy recruiting. Got to talk some important off-field additions, including Corey Fuller. Watch his video. He's electric. And I think we can get to some FSU basketball today because we've got a lot of disappointment to talk about. I think so, too, man. But, hey, we also might be discussing, you know, a little bit of Ron Dugan's action because I think today as we are listening to this, we'll know whether or not he's fully extended. Folks, as always, thank you guys so much for the love and support. And with that being said, let's get on with the show. You are Locked On Seminoles, your daily podcast on the Florida State Seminoles, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team... Every day. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, and welcome back to another edition of Locked On Seminoles. I'm your host, Drake, and today I'm joined by Mr. David Wise as we both brave and shoulder the cold sub sub hundred sub tundra right now that is South and North Florida. Dave, how cold is it up to you by you right now? Because I am freezing my ass off. Down it's, here. Like, it's like 30s. I you know I enjoy this weather. I'm a sicko. I am a mass hole from new england originally and this is delightful to me yeah see i woke up this morning to 39 and i'm like nope i left baltimore for a damn reason i'm no longer used to this i am not having a good time but we're not he we are not the weather channel that's funny i think i've said it like two times now that we've had them on together actually but we will be discussing today starting off with mr camden fryer a huge recruiting hit yep. for mike novell and his staff a 2024 wide receiver from i think it's li- uh live oak or swan i think is a, is a school Dave, can you tell us a little more about Camden Fryer? Yeah, Drake. Camden Fryer is, as you alluded to, a legacy recruit, son of Matt Fryer, who was here during the 93 National Championship team and had his biggest year that year. Uh, Camden Fryer, I believe, I'm not sure exactly which combine it was. I think it was the All-American combine. was the fastest wide receiver in attendance there. Um, That's something we've been lacking. He's going to be... If he doesn't grow any taller, he's going to be the prototypical slot receiver that it seems like every team we play has one of and beats us with. And we just never can seem to find one. Like, I think hearkening back to like Kenny Shaw was probably the last time we had a slot receiver that was as dynamic as every other team we seem to play. So it's it's not just that we were getting a fast receiver. Um, It's that we're finally landing an important legacy recruit that we've been striking out on like Adam Dunn back in his heyday. Damn, that's a good reference. And I like how you said that too, because actually Camden Fryer also is going to be a dual sport athlete at Florida State. He actually is. I follow Perfect Game, which is the high school baseball you know, recruiting version of kind of rivals or um, or 247. Yeah, and the number two football. outfielder? Didn't I did I see that right? Um, I don't know. But he's a he's a high level prospect, right? Yeah, he's. I mean, I mean, he's a he's a high level kid, man. I mean, the kid is nasty as hell at baseball, and I mean, we kind of need the offer of that. But like, I'm right there with you where we need more speed on the outside. I mean, he ran, I think, a four or five flat at the Under Armour All American Combine for juniors, which is, listen, man. I mean, that's if you're the fastest time recorded out of all those kids, that's I mean, that's something to be show about. And we definitely do need speed on the on the inside and on the outside too, because we have struggled for what the past four years it feels like now getting separation off the line of scrimmage. But then you bring up an important point where, folks, I'm not saying like it's legacy recruiting is a little more different in my personal opinion that comes to, you know, recruiting, you know, kids primarily because you, you already have that sort of easier not in, but you already have that relationship when it comes to, you know, family members. Right. We saw Marvin Jones Jr. this past class. We saw Brandon Jennings from the class before where legacy recruiting, it seems to me, has been a little more more difficult for the staff to kind of harp in on. And that's that's probably because of where the program is at right now. But it's also how good these kids are, and they have more options probably. So I kind of want to ask your opinion on that. This this is – I could go on an hour-long rant about this. It makes me sick how pathetic uh, legacy recruiting has been on the whole at Florida State uh, since the Jimbo Fisher era ended. Um, you're, seeing, you're seeing that we're getting these kids in the door, and – I, it's like one of those things where if you have a you have an in at a job, it's at least going to get you an interview. It may not land you the job, but you, it'll get your foot in the door. So it it should come as no surprise that we're in the top four or five for all these legacy kids. 
but you name just a couple and you go back and like Devin Bush was another one. And like now we're in it for Leon Washington Jr. And holy shit, I just remember his dad playing for the Jets like yesterday. I don't know how that's happening already, but it's, uh, there, there have been no dearth of legacy recruits that have been high level prospects that Florida State has missed on. And it's irritating to me. Because it's not just that these kids' dads played for us and they should come play here. It's that most of them are also really good. And when you have the competitive advantage of your dad's familiarity with the program and you growing up, presumably having watched it and heard about it, and it seems like it should be really easy to close. That's the problem. The staff is the staffs going back the last six years have had a really hard time in the recruiting game closing on the important recruits. Mike Norvell has put together a really good class. No question. Travis Hunter thing was probably outside his control. You can't compete against millions of dollars. It is what it is. But there have been other prospects that we just haven't been able to close on. It's okay to be critical of shortcomings uh, of the coaching staff while still recognizing that they're doing either the best job that they could do in the confines of what they've created or a good job in general, but they have not done a good job closing on legacy prospects or closing on a lot of prospects in general. And that's a huge problem. And it starts with legacy recruiting. I mean, no, I get that, but I kind of, I mean, cause I'm right there with you. I think, you know, landing legacy recruiting is legacy kids is very, very important because you know, you do have that extra and you do have that familiar relationship before, but I do kind of want to push back a little bit about how I guess important it is. If your kid, like say your kid's uh, Marvin Jones Jr. has the Alabama offer, the Ohio State offer, and the Georgia offer, right? And you went to Florida State. Florida State right now, as you know, has won eight games in two years. Would yep. you would would you push your kid really really badly to go there, even if you do want? Him to, he did. You want him to. Marvin Jones absolutely did. Look no, no, no. Oh, no, no. I know. I mean, like, like would you, like would you send your kid there? I'm would saying. I. Yes. Um, it would depend on if I trust the staff, and isn't that the whole point? Isn't that the problem? Like I mean, if, if if they're not pushing their kids there, that means they don't trust the staff. And they probably know better than we do. I know, but like also we got to realize at the end of the day, like these kids, it's, it's their decision at the end of it too. Like it's not, you know, whether you or me or want to send our kids over there. It's also like, it's it's the next, it's the big decision for the rest of their lives, you know, for four years. So it's you kind know, of like, go ahead. You brought up the perfect example with Marvin Jones Jr. actually. And here's why. When he made this decision, it was after Jermaine Jones had demonstrated that even after just one year at Florida State, you can become a first round pick, right? Yeah. It was after Janarius Robinson uh, and uh, blanket on the other one on the other side. J.S. Rakendo. Rakendo um, made themselves into NFL picks despite limited or, you know, kind of average production in FSU. They still got drafted. We've still been able to get kids at his position drafted so the question of is it going to is it going to give you the same opportunity to get to the next level and make that money the answer is yes yeah but also like remember back in the day when we recruited robinson kane though we were top 10 team we were coming out for the championship it was like it's a whole different dynamic and it's also i mean jermaine johnson is a great great deal but we don't know also how long norvell's gonna be here much longer i mean i think he'll be here until 2024 but like there's a lot of different outliers and when you have the stability of a georgia who was just one national championship Alabama, who won the year before, and Ohio State, who has produced the likes of the both the Bosa Bros and Chase Young. I'm sorry, it's really hard when you have like these kind of legacies and they're this talent level to kind of keep them in state and keep them at the school. So, I mean, that's just my personal opinion. Like, but I do think that it's very important that we at least show a lot of interest or we're like at toward the ends that we can get these legacy recruits. I know. I'm sorry, Dave. I, 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 because I'm right there with you, but it sucks. But you know what doesn't suck? Get upside, Dave. You're a big get upside guy. Let the folks know how it works out. Yeah, I am. I actually use it. Been using it for at least two years now. It's an app. You download it on your cell phone. When you're going to a gas station, open the app. You'll see which gas stations around you participate. Uh, go to one that participates, and they will literally deposit cash into either your PayPal, your Venmo, uh, a gift card, just for buying the exact same gasoline you were already going to buy. There's, It's not like a gimmick. There's no strings attached to it. You buy gas, you get the cash back. It will actually save you money and give you money in your pocket for something you were doing anyways. There's literally no reason not to use it. 
who say that there's no downside to using good upside. Yeah, yeah you see what I did? Axe isn't the only one with good uh, little things right there, but folks, use promo code SCORE, S-C-O-R-E, for 25 cents per gallon or more on your first fill-up cash back. And as Dave said, you get cash out of bank account, PayPal, or an e-gift card from Amazon whenever you use the get up the free Get Upside app today by using promo code SCORE. And we are back with Dave. Dave, there was a huge, huge hire that happened off the field. And by huge, I mean... We've, seen, we've, all seen, we've all seen the viral video. He's a big guy. He's a former FSU legacy. And strangely enough, we also hired a former University of Florida defensive back, probably one of the best players they've had in their program's history. Can you tell us a little more about Corey Fuller and Kwan Radliff now off the additions to the program? Corey Fuller is exactly the kind of presence needed at FSU. If, if you haven't, go Google or sorry, YouTube um, the video of the impassioned speeches he would give as the head coach at Gadsden High School. Um, obviously it's a little different, the, uh, the environment at Florida state versus, uh, a high school in Gadsden. However, he, he's good at delivering messages to players. And one of his messages is to work for every damn thing you get. And it's funny because I was talking to Drake about this before, uh, before we started recording today and Antonio Cromartie just did a space where he was talking about. Uh, how kids need to stick through it and work hard and how he was at FSU for five years and only played two of those and that it worked out great for him. Well, Corey Fuller is the kind of guy who delivers the message very passionately about working for everything. And it seems like one of the problems, and I could be wrong, but I don't think I am at Florida State, has been that kids just haven't worked as hard as they previously did. That maybe an indictment of this stat. No, like under Jimbo Fisher, it seemed like the kids were working. It seemed like the team was working harder in practices. We hear a lot of shit from Mike Norvell. It's probably true about how he's not happy with our practices. The effort level wasn't there. It shows up in games. I don't think it's that every team we play has been more talented than us. We're more talented than most of the teams we've lost to. So I, I don't think I'm wrong about that. But Corey Fuller is, like you said, he 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 had some good years at Florida State. He had some good production under Bobby Bowden. He's you could you can talk about the other edition probably more than I can, but Corey Fuller is a guy that everybody who knows who he is is excited to have him as part of this program. So K1 Ratliff, actually ironically, which is pretty funny, he um he played football at University of Florida, I think from 2000 to 2003 or four. I remember he was like a second round draft pick at the Cincinnati Bengals. And he played in the league, I think, till probably 09. So he was like a six year vet. And what's really funny about him is actually he was one of those defensive backs in Florida, I think, who was all SEC. I think it was all SEC also as a freshman. He was a first team All American, I think, his last year of football. So he, we're getting someone here that's extremely good at you know what they were doing. And also he's from, you know, he's from what they call themselves DBU. Ironically enough, he actually tweeted out, I think, a year and a half, I mean not a year and a half ago, a month ago saying, head to DBU. Who knew that he was going to be here a month and a half later? So even K1 Ratliff, one of y'all's best DBs, knows that FSU is the real DBU. And with Kalen Ratliff, he'll be the assistant director of high school relations, which he'll be ha- helping hand handle Ryan Bartow, which, folks, I mean, we discussed here how Ryan Bartow, how all three of us have felt, and kind of other guests doing other pods as well, feel, feel like Ryan Bartow, so definitely give him the help that he, all, that he needs. And then with Corey Fuller, Corey Fuller is going to be the director of football person, football relations, which I'm not going to lie to you. I'm not 100% sure what it's like that entails, but I'm pretty sure I think that deals with between the program and the actual uh, athletic department itself, so that's something that he's going to need. Well, you're right. I mean, we've all seen the viral video of him, you know, talk about where he come from in the rain, like how you have to, you know, grind every single day, how the dream is free, but the hustle is not is sold separately. So yeah. that's definitely you need to bring that mentality each and every day when it comes to the football locker room. Well, and plus, j- to be clear, he's done it, too. Like he he was drafted in the second round. Also, he had a 10 year career in the NFL. So he did what these kids want to do. Like so it's it's selling something that he has firsthand experience with, including uh, under an FS at, on an FSU team that was performing to FSU's standards in the nineties. Um, I, I, I just want to point something out too. notice the titles, like normal titles that they're giving these off field coaches, uh, because William Napier down in Gainesville, uh, decides to call his coaches like coach of sh- director of shenanigans and director of whimsy and it's it's just nonsense like <laughs> holy shit is that guy making an embarrassment of like a school that actually should be good at football i mean if we're being honest the guy before him didn't really show 
much care of anything when it comes to off-field stuff. I, I think all he cared about was the X's and O's and the Jimmy's and Joe's. I'm not even the Jimmy Joe's that much because he did not like recruiting. But right. I mean, with Billy with the Billy Napier thing, I mean, I'm like, I kind of get where like everyone's hating on him for hiring a thousand people single-handedly, saving the unemployment rate in the state of Florida actually yeah. as a, by himself. Good for him. Yeah. Oh, yeah, good for him. Great guy. But I mean, we'll see how it turns out because I do like that some of the off-field hires they made, but I do like they were finally kind of like getting a greater support staff and it kind of yeah. leads credit and it brings evidence to the fact that Mike, Michael Alford, since he's been the AD, I think since the beginning of this month, that we're finally opening up the checkbook a lot more and providing Norvell and the entire football program as a whole the resources with what they need to be competitive. And for you to be competitive, whether it be in the weight room, whether it be for your New Year's resolutions, folks, always use Built Bar. Dave, you're a uh, cookie dough guy, right? I have always cookie dough, anything. Uh, cookie dough, anything. You know, I'm the Cherry Barcia guy. Dave, I mean, not Dave. Max is the Peanut Butter Brownie Brigade. But folks, use BuiltBar.com. I'm sorry, use Built.com. Use promo code LOCKS15 to get 15% off your order. That promo code is LOCKS15, L-O-C-K-E-D-1-5. And folks, they have 19 delicious flavors. If you like the three that I just listed off between me, Dave, and Max, you got six others to choose from, whether it be mint brownie, raspberry, and I know one of our friends over at Locked on BC actually is a huge cook and almond guy. So head on over to Built.com, Built Bars, delicious, nutritious, and as always, you can thank us later. And we are wrapping up today with a little bit of a Dave's choice, a dealer's choice, which I'm not going to lie to you. I Typically speaking, I don't like doing that with Dave because I never know where he's going with this. So Dave, you got two options we'll be getting the show off on. We can discuss the basketball team over here about how we went from winning three out of three games to losing our next two. Or since today is January 31st and today is the day where we're finding out about Dugan's extension, whether it be an extension or whether he's heading out somewhere else over here. So which one do you want to go? Okay. You know what? Here's what we're going to do. We need more time than one segment, I think, to break down this FSU basketball dog shit that we're seeing. Let's, let's repackage that for tomorrow. And uh, today, let's talk something else that gets us pissed off, huh? How about some Ron Dugan's talk? I can't wait. How about you? You start off, my guy. You're the first up in T-Box. Okay. So here's the thing. One of the things we haven't been good at at FSU in a long time is that wide receiver. Usually when a segment, segment an entire segment of your team isn't doing well, you look to the coach and you say, this coach isn't getting the job done. And you say, okay, we'll find another one. Well, it seems to me Mike Norvell understands that the wide receiver room has not done well. Why? Because he went out and got 1,100 transfers. Literally replaced the entire room, basically. So he gets it. The room has been, <laughs> been a problem, okay? But why is there no accountability at the top? I refuse to believe that it's because we can't find another receiver coach who may be better. I just refuse to believe that. Uh, you have to go at, at some point, whether you think you've found the perfect receiver coach or not to replace yours. At some point, you just have to change the scenery in the room. Uh, Tamori and Terry actively got worse under Ron Dugans. I mean, that is that is alarming. Our receiver room. Each of the individual receivers in the room have failed to improve year over year. They're not learning. They're not learning how to run routes right. They're not doing almost anything right. They got the dropsies like usual. I don't understand what they're being taught. And and you have to look to the top. And if Mike Norvell is not going to make a change at that position, he's insane. Because the definition of insanity is doing the same thing and expecting different results. And that seems like exactly what he's doing. And there's no there's no explanation for it in my mind. It's extremely frustrating. And it seems like throwing up the white flag and saying, "Yeah, so maybe we'll suck a receiver. We'll just try to do other good stuff good too." No, help help Jordan Travis out. Help those receivers out. We're not going to have a good offense as long as your receivers suck. Get out of here. I mean, yeah, but also like it's. I mean, we talked about a trade last week. Like, if a lot, it's people probably have an aversion to working with Norvell because of people like you and me of two four seven. Of you see the Noel game day crew there too of rivals too discussing like how much time every single like every single day every single offseason topic is how much time Mike Novell has left. Do you really really want to leave your former spot where you're probably making a very good salary? Your family's right there. You want to uproot them and take them down to a job where he might get fired within a year within two years. I mean, with Jawan Sider, he was the big name. He was denied. I mean, he's denied us twice. 
and it was primarily due to family and also due to basically he we don't know what we're going to have in two years from now so it's like you, it's going to be very difficult to bring in coaches like that and then with the i mean me personally i what i would have done i mean you had a good running backs coach now that's the running backs coach over to oregon I mean, you had Carlos Lachlan, who was the head of football relations, the high school relations here, went to Western Kentucky, and then after a year there, got hired over at Oregon, and basically is already recruiting his ass off. So, to me, my personal opinion, he probably could have done something in house where he could have, you know, let go of Dugans. Then you promote Yak, who actually Yak before was a wide receiver coach before he became a running backs coach. He used to be yards after contact, sorry, yards after the catch, and then now it's yards after contact. That's what Yak is for. I mean, if you, I learned that from the uh, sit down interview you had last year with two four seven, and then you probably go grab you know a young up coming for running backs because, in my personal opinion, running backs coach is typically your better recruiter, right? I mean, Pimpleton. I mean, he wasn't the best teacher, but he also was one of our better recruiters. You can look at the kids he landed before we got he got fired. So, in my personal opinion, I agree with you that Dugan should have been should be replaced, but. We also have to realize that this job is nowhere near as sexy because there's like no, you don't have the same job security here because the guy had in charge that's going to hire you. Yeah. Let me, let me respond to that. It just, and I'm not saying you're saying this, it feels like we've gotten back to this loser blood mentality of, of having to justify shortcomings uh, rather than be able to fix them. I refuse to believe that one of the things Mike Norvell is most kind of touted and known for is that he has a tree. Everybody that coaches under him ends up moving up, right? Yeah. Even even when you have a guy like uh, I'm blanking here. What's his name that went to Virginia Tech? Uh, the Chris linebacker. Marv. Chris Marv. Chris Marv performed poorly at FSU. It's really hard to argue against that. And he moved up. Everyone that coaches under Norvell moves up. Norvell was himself a wide receiver. I refuse to believe that somewhere, and I'm, this is just randomly me throwing this out, at Minnesota or North Texas, that somewhere there isn't a receivers coach who's an up-and-comer that wouldn't kill to have, even if he knows Norvell might not be here that long, he'll still have a couple years under him, and he'll probably move up after that. I just refuse to believe we can't find one of those. Yeah, but then also we go back to the thing where we don't hot want him. Like we said the same thing with Wooly. We don't want him hiring, you know, his boys or people that he you know he basically that he you know he's been working with. We want him to hire like the best of the best out there. That's kind of why he got the pay increase. Now I look at more of the broad scheme of things. If we look at the entire staff the past two years, there's only been one change, and that's Chris Marv leaving. And to me, the more concerning thing about all of that is that we have eight wins in two years. And there's not a single person that's either been, you know, terminated or simply, you know, has, you know, been asked to leave. So to me, that's a little more concerned than, you know, not getting a wide receivers coach. But I do agree with you because I don't trust Ron Dugans, in my personal opinion, to develop these kids. I really don't after seeing this for three years. And we're about to be going into year four. And for me personally, I mean, we, we went home and hitting with Juwan Sider, which goes to me to show that we're not going to be going out for, you know, former Novell tree, uh, coaching tree hires because that's a big name. He's the best recruiter probably in the Big Ten right now. He was the former, he was formerly at Florida. He wants to come back to Florida, but you know other things came in the way of that. So to me, it's just I would look more to say like, why are we still having the same makeup with the staff after only eight wins? But I mean, I get your frustration, but sometimes also we got to look at it as like, is it really is the grass really that greener if we kind of go out somewhere with no? Yes, grass? yes, yes, because we know the grass isn't green right now. Uh, we you have to try something. If it turns out that it wasn't better, it can't be much worse. Like, look, by all indications, Ron Dugans is a great guy. I have never heard anybody say otherwise. However, he's an average recruiter at best, and he's a very poor teacher of the wide receiver position. We know those things to be true. And in light of that, I don't see how it's possible for somebody to come in and do worse. And I don't say that to be mean to Ron Dugans. However, it would be difficult for anybody to come in and be worse at recruiting or to teach the position any worse than it's being taught right now. So yes, you do need to make a change. I don't care if it's one of Mike Norvell's boys because the guy that's here right now isn't getting the job done. I mean, basically speaking, like we're going to find out, you know, by the end of today, you know, you're listening to this on January 31st and it's the last day of his contract, whether or not he gets that year extension <laughs> or, you know, we actually find have an internal hire or an outside hire. Hopefully, you know, we'll get more clarity on that. But folks, as always, Thank you guys so much for the love and support. Please, if you can, don't forget to rate, review, like, share, or subscribe. Eat on our podcast, Spotify, Stitcher, 
wherever you get your podcast from. Don't forget, five-star reviews, and now you're on YouTube, so you can see myself with a baby Yoda in the background. You can see Dave's little haircut, too, poking out from his headphones. And as always, like this video, hit the subscribe banner up at the top, and also ding the little bell so you know when new videos drop. For myself, Drake, that was Dave. We'll see you all tomorrow on the Lockdown Sentinels. Take care, everybody. Go on.